Hey guys, Shmeet back here with another video. And uh, since the Hornets don't play today, I had to think of a video to make. And I, I thought of a video on Gordon Hayward and that that's going to be uh, what this video is talking about. So if you like uh, consistent NBA content, if you like the Hornets, uh, subscribe down below. We're on a road to 400 subscribers and you could be a part of that. But the reason I wanted to talk about Gordon Hayward mostly is because he came out with an article uh, this past week talking about, you know, this Hornets team. And I'm going to overview a little of it. He talked about, you know, COVID and coming together as a team, um, which which uh, is good to know because um, it's kind of no it's kind of good to know where where players heads are at when it when it comes to COVID, because the days can be long just staying in your hotel rooms. Um, he talked about the coach, JB. I, I don't really, really have an opinion on JB as a coach, but but he referenced him um, learning a lot from Coach Popovich um, being a no nonsense coach. Which, which, which is kind of funny because he doesn't come off as a as a no nonsense coach. Yeah, just just his personality. It, it uh, he doesn't seem like that type of guy. But he also talked about how JB has allowed Gordon Hayward to be himself on the court, and I think that's that's one of my first talking points. Is um, this whole article really really let me know that Gordon wanted to be the vocal point on a on an NBA team. And I think the large amount of media didn't understand that till till he wanted to sign with the Charlotte Hornets uh, in that sign and trade uh, with the Boston Celtics. And and this whole article made me realize that 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 was his main goal coming into free agency last year. And it and it makes sense, you know, being on Utah where he had an All Star year and and a good four or five years on that team. And it makes sense that. He would want to be a, be a focal point on on an NBA team again, especially being a third or fourth option with Boston. It just makes sense why he would want to come to Charlotte. And uh, obviously, coming to Charlotte was a good idea because he's averaging averaging 21 points a game. You know that's that's pretty similar to his All Star year. And and he's maybe our number one. I don't know if he's a number one option. He isn't in terms of players looking up to him. Uh, you know he's playing with a lot of young guys, so obviously they're going to look up to uh, to a 30 year old and I, I wouldn't I don't know if I'd put LaMelo as a number one option on our team or Gordon but most of these points are coming from you know his pull-up shots um, which I'll show here you know it, it's it's mostly catch and shoot scenarios um, where where they're mostly assisted on I, I would like to see him become more of a playmaker um, this year especially in the second half of the season when we're when we're going into the playoffs um, you know his his assist numbers aren't the greatest and I would like to see him do more than just catch and shoot is is mostly what I'm getting at I, I think he can be a more aggressive he's shown it in Utah I know he's getting older and he wants to change his game but I that's that from my point of view that's that's what I would like to see him uh, transition his game into but but, but it, then again, you can't teach an old dog new tricks is, is the saying. But I mean, he's only averaging four free throws a game on. But if he does get to the line more, he, he's shooting a great percent. And it should be noted that he's he's a great um, efficiency player. I mean, his his three point percentage is really good field goal. Um, and that's what you need on a on a young team. You need a you need a guy to just be solid all the time. And, and that's what Gordon's been. Obviously, last night versus the Raptors, he didn't have a, a great game with like I think nine points but uh, for most of the year he's been solid for us uh, but the real question I have with Gordon Hayward um, is can he show up in the playoffs and and I, I shouldn't forecast too much because obviously we're we're pretty borderline when it comes to playoffs uh, with our young team I mean we're on a four game winning streak right now but that can that can always change to like a 10 game losing streak but anyways um, if we do get into the playoffs um, can Gordon Hayward show up for us is is my big question because he hasn't really done it in the past that uh play, playoff series with Utah he he had 25 but that 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 was a small sample size in the two years with Boston that they made the playoffs I mean he's averaged he averaged nine points a game in 2019 and 11 points a game in 2020 obviously he was again a third or fourth option I don't know if Kemba's Kemba was the third option he wasn't like a like a very impactful player for Boston then again I, I have to look back and say like 11 points per game is still still terrible I mean I, I think Ricky Rubio might be averaging 11 points per game so that's my big question is can he show up in the playoffs for us and can he really still be a number one option and average you know 21 but but again going forward 
as I like to project, as I just did with the playoffs. I mean, he's under contract till 2024. And although he's one of my favorite players in the NBA right now, just because I am a Hornets fan, um, will he be that in 2024? I don't know. Um, obviously, he's lived up to his contract this year, but but Kenny for the rest of it is is really another question that I have because I mean, 30 million at least. 30 million a year for the next couple of years is a lot of money and obviously with the stats and the almost an almost an all-star appearance i would say he's lived up to it right now but i mean he's already 30 and and can he can he still be doing this when he's 34 because there's there's a li limited number of players that age really like well um in recent memory obviously the big outlier is lebron uh, but to a lesser scale, you got guys like Chris Paul, and and the list is short uh, for guys. I mean, Vince Carter really fell off. Paul Pierce really fell off. I'm trying to think of other, you know, long-term players. But 34 isn't too old. I think Chris Paul is like 36, um, if I'm not mistaken. But but that just shows you that you know guys guys change uh, year to year really quickly with with the NBA. And I don't know if he can still be putting up these numbers in, in 2024. Um, and yeah, that, that's that's going to be it for me. I know I ended it on a, on a negative note. Uh, but but this article that he that he came out on his website uh, really showed me, you know, what he was looking for. And it, it made me reflect on his stats and how, how he is going forward. And uh, that's going to be it for me, guys. Obviously, I'm going to have a link to the original article in the description. And I'll see you guys later.